Last segment is brought to you by Engineered Tax Services, where engineering and accounting come together. Joining us on Skype is Julio Gonzalez, founder of ETS. Welcome, Julio. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. We're sitting here talking about real estate, and now we're going to talk about taxes. It's trying to keep that money uh, in our pockets, isn't it? <laughs> I love real estate as an investment. It's the most tax-efficient vehicle in terms of <laughs> investing in this country. So you guys are uh, talking my language. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I recently pulled out a mortgage and I've realized that all, a, a lot of the interest is deductible. In fact, 100% in my case is deductible. Mm -hmm. People tend to forget that. Well, I think that, you know, real estate is the one investment in the United States that you get to fully expense. So you buy stocks, you buy bonds, you invest in venture capital, private equity. None of that investment is eligible for expensing, right? You just hope that it appreciates and that you make money on the appreciation and some dividends. With real estate, you're hoping for appreciation, you're hoping for income, but you get to write it off dollar for dollar. So you buy a million dollar property, you get to write off a million dollars in taxes. That's what's so amazing about real estate. That's why when you guys are talking about people that have created, you know, high net worth, you know, most of our billionaires in these United States that were self-made did it through real estate because they were getting the benefit of appreciation income but they were also expensing the whole investment dollar for dollar, which was offsetting the income they were making from those. So basically getting some tax-free income. So Real Estate Weekly is called Section 721 Exchange is one of the real estate's best kept secrets. What is a 721 exchange? Well, what it is, is that when we buy real estate, we talked about the benefits of getting able to expense it. Now, when you sell any investment in this country, you have to pay capital gains on the appreciation of your investment. But with real estate, you get to exchange it. You can take the, the, the gains, the uh, income that you've made from the property, and transfer it into another real estate project and defer those taxes. That, that's called a 1031. So that's taking one real estate property, selling it, going into another one. So the 721 is amazing because now we're able to sell that one property, but say you can't find another replacement property. You have a short timetable. Nothing looks good. The real estate market is a little more difficult, more challenging. Now you can go into a real estate fund, a, basically a mutual fund of uh, real estate of properties that you know people put out there. And now instead of having to go from one property to another property, you can go into a fund of you know, 10, 20, 30 properties that you don't have to manage, that you sit back and get the dividends, you get all the benefits of the expensing, you're one of many owners, but it makes that process of uh, having to uh, exchange much simpler. Julio, I have a question. So right now I'm doing a um, smart home luxury development in Jersey City that I am um, considering selling once done. Now, so 1031, obviously I would have to find another property to put it into to defer the taxes. but. Are you telling me that with the 721, I can actually put the I can put the proceeds, the capital gains, into um, different funds? Different funds. They have to be real estate funds. Well, but, like yes, like say uh, with a sponsor operator or with a direct investment fund, and I could place it there. Exactly. And so, I wouldn't have to pay taxes on it. You wouldn't have to. They would just keep deferring, right? Defer, defer, defer. Make that exactly. money. Become that billionaire by investing in real estate, expensing it, deferring the taxes, and building your wealth by wealth preservation. So um, that's exactly right what you're saying. So I used to cover, uh, I used to cover real estate, commercial real estate uh, every day, and I have never heard of this. How come uh, a media, uh, ex-media guy like myself or us sitting here who own real estate assets, why haven't we heard of this? Well, it's, it's really brand new. I mean, People have been figuring out ways to change the 1031 rules to basically be able to go from one property to multiple properties through a fund. So this is new tax language, new tax code. Uh, people are taking advantage of through these what's called a DST, a Del Delaware Statutory Trust. But you know, code keeps changing. People keep finding ways to make things more efficient, and this is a byproduct of people looking for ways to do a 1031 but not do it from property to property. So this is the involvement of our tax system and smart people out there in real estate looking for better ways. And what is the eligibility? What, how do you qualify for a 721 exchange? Well, the elig eligibility is the same as 1031. You, uh, really? sell the, you sell your property, 
and now instead of going into the next property over a 180 day process, you go into a fund that you like that has, say, uh, multifamily, or you go into a fund that does self storage, or you know whatever that fund is, and now you've diversified your risk. You don't have any work associated with managing the properties, and uh, so I think it's a really good tool for some people that you know want to exit, keep the gains, defer the taxes, but don't want to continue to find that next property to manage. Right, because that's really the challenge with the 1031. You become under pressure with the deadline. The next thing you know, you might have a subpar property. And that's really what this is for, is to avoid that, you know, that stop of not having that property available to you. So at least you have some choices now, and these choices can be really helpful, especially for people that, you know, want to go into retirement, don't want to manage, and uh, but want to continue to preserve wealth. This, wow, this good advice. Good. So you Absolute, got some good advice. I just here. learned something here because it's <laughs> funny. I'm actually doing a direct investment with a fund that I that I'm uh, for the for the purpose of getting into more institutional level assets, and I had to move money. This is really phenomenal. I could fit, exit the deal and go into that. So pretty See, cool, Julio. Thank you, Julio. You're, you're, you're already giving us good advice over here. That's it. <laughs> yeah, and I would think you know just real quickly think about it from the real estate funds perspective. Now they're able to capture all this um, money that they typically couldn't have access to. So it works both ways. Right now we have these funds that can, you know, market to people that want to sell their buildings but don't want to manage anymore. So it's it's great for both ways. Well, Julio, as always, every week, thank you so much for joining us. And I'm sure Philip's very grateful. I'm, hey, phenomenal. And I've actually heard of Julio. And uh, he's the man from what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Julio.